Yesterday, during Adam versus the man, we got breaking news that there was an explosion in Beirut. In the lead up to this segment in today's show, I have already misattributed this twice as the Beirut bombing. Like, why, why am I? Like, and, and as Jim just pointed out, there's a kind of programmed response when something like this happens. And I, I haven't been watching the mainstream news. Uh, I'm not a, a Trump fan who's been, you know, Trump has been deliberately misrepresenting this even just in the last 24 hours since it's happened. But I'm really excited to see. I shouldn't start a sentence like that about this story. A hundred dead people. No, 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 no. I'm really excited to see how people are responding to this and how quickly the truth became apparent. So just a little background here. Yesterday when this happened, we saw the video. We saw the photos. We saw a giant mushroom cloud. So for our coverage today, we want to start with the story from NBCNews.com. Massive warehouse explosion rocks Beirut, causing thousands of injuries and widespread damage. Now, that, that seems like, you know, kind of a fair headline. If you don't know what really happened. At least 4,000 people have been injured and 100 have been killed. The numbers are likely to rise with hospitals filling up fast. And CJ, if you would get that on screen one more time, it's worth looking at the blast itself. And and yesterday, when this came up during the show, everyone was like, oh, we got all of you. And, and I'm not, I don't think it's the wrong reaction to, to say, hey, there was an explosion. It looks like a, like, like a serious big one. You know, let's pay attention. And you got to watch this video. And it's 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 only like, like it's four or five seconds. There are a few angles. You know, there, there are a bunch of people who caught this on camera because there was a, it looked like a preliminary explosion, preliminary fire. So yesterday also we heard two explosions. And yeah, technically, well, uh, technically that's true. It's not at all correct, right? Because what you're seeing on screen right now is that shot where you had the preliminary okay and then there goes the blast and this is one of the one of the photo or one of the videos that we saw from a, a nearby high-rise apartment building and just as a, as a fan of explosions yeah i like stuff blowing up wow this is a cool one right you know subtract the tragedy but as an explosion people were really fascinated all over the world right away seeing that but pretty quickly there, as you see on screen, look at those flashes at the bottom of the screen. We go, oh, fireworks, it was a fireworks warehouse. And you go, look, all right, logic test here. Not everything that makes bright flashes like that is fireworks, okay? You know, and I hate to have to say it like that, but there were a lot of people, you know, jumping on different explanations. And okay, let's, CJ, uh, you got to stop. You're driving me nuts now. This is beautiful. And if you want to, like, geek out on the explosion porn, you know, like, oh, yeah, you can go see it from dozens of angles. You can go see uh, all sorts of photographs, aerial shots. I mean, you could you could geek out on this for a long time. But the basics of what happened is that we saw a series of preliminary explosions, right? So it's not – it's true there were two explosions. It's not accurate because there was one explosion site, and it's probably more accurate to say there were a number of – preliminary explosions right or uh you know triggering explosions or or other things going on here but this, to say it was two definitely not accurate because how many explosions were there actually at least dozens you know you look at this each one of those little flash pops was another explosion well is it fireworks going on and so you know we saw this happen you look at the the video and some of the you go whoa mushroom cloud serious, serious mushroom cloud. And a lot of people jumped on, oh, it's a nuke. Not every explosion that produces a mushroom cloud is a nuclear weapon, first of all. And yes, it was spectacular. And, and there was a lot of uh, red plumes, as you see in the smoke and the flames coming out of this. In some ways, it, it, the location is fortunate. Because it was at a port, 
Although, I mean, I would, obviously it would be better if it was in an unpopulated area entirely. But it was in a port, and you can see next to it there was a building of silos. And from the photograph that we see in, uh, of the aftermath, pretty solid cement building that had a giant chunk just pff, obliterated. But that might have saved a lot of people, right? And if this, if this blast had happened not at the port, but at a more populated part of the city, whoa, hey, the death toll could have been a lot more. So to the NBC story, how, how do they lead this one out? A colossal explosion that rocked the port area of Lebanon's capital Tuesday, killing dozens of people and injuring thousands more, happened at a warehouse where tons of ammonium nitrate were being stored, the prime minister said. As he said, Hassan Diab, the prime minister, I will not rest until we find the person responsible for what happened to hold him accountable and impose the most severe penalties. Diab said it was unacceptable that a shipment of ammonium nitrate estimated at 2,750 tons had been in warehouse for six years without preventative measures to protect it. The chemical compound, which is commercially available, is used widely in fertilizers and explosives. It wasn't clear what ignited the shipment, but at least 4,000 people were injured and 100 others killed. The Secretary General of the Lebanese Red Cross, George Katana, told Lebanese broadcaster LBCI on Wednesday the number of casualties could rise, some of the injuries are serious, and some people are still trapped under the rubble. Images and videos on social media appear to show large plumes of smoke and damaged buildings. So this was, a, you know, a blast in a way. And I mean, I just, I'm so tempted to jump ahead to the punchline here. It is like killing me to not jump ahead to like, uh, but we're going to get through a couple more stories, a couple more headlines about this. From Time 24 News, 300,000 homeless people damage spread to half of the city. Yes, it is absolutely worth taking a, a moment here to properly assess the scope of the damage. Up to 300,000 people find themselves homeless in Beirut on Wednesday. Overnight explosions that rocked the port, said the governor of the capital, Marwan Aboud, estimating the cost of the damage at more than $3 billion, according to him, the damage spread to almost half the city. Seems seems a little bit premature to put a dollar amount on the damage, but yeah, a big round number, you know, okay. Okay, you know, I can, I can take that. Uh, you know, as, um, you know, this is, this is, Pretty intense, so, yeah. You know, and and you look at even even this uh, overnight explosions that rock the port. Uh, even presenting this as is multiple explosions seems just a little bit dishonest, sensationalistic. Even now, for the Sun, the U.S. Sun, the Sun dot com. You would expect a more sensational headline, but hell on earth. Beirut explosion, blast a fifth the size of Hiroshima, kills 100 as welder ignites 2,700 tons of explosive chemicals. Now, hell on earth. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I, you know, I think the hell on earth here is really still, in, in a sense, <coughs> the fact that uh, the cause of this thing, and I'll, we'll we'll get to that. The cause of this thing is still going strong, but to compare now to compare this to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, already blowing it way out of proportion, taking advantage of the propaganda opportunity that you get when you see a giant mushroom cloud like this. Now, it's definitely a little bit early to estimate the size, force, et cetera, of the blast in, in, a, in a conclusive way enough to say we can compare it to a, a blast the size of, of the, the atom bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which devastated cities. You know what? No. like the, mm, I mean, right away I hear that comparison. I go, wait a second. So I looked it up. How many people died? Hiroshima, 150,000. Nagasaki, 75,000. Hundred for the Beirut ammonium nitrate explosion. So obviously this is being blown up, and and I think there was a period with the news 
where they were willing to just a uh, make let people assume the worst that this was a terrorist attack or a, you know a government bomb but like right away right away i can tell you that that was not the case now we still can't rule out the possibility that this was a non-governmental terrorist attack as opposed to a government terrorist attack or simply the cause of government criminality and negligence. You know, hypothetically, right? I mean, Jim, I don't think we can rule out some possible, like it could have been, yes, it was, I mean, we, we can we can pretty definitively say the setup and, and what this was and how it happened, but how it actually happened decisively, I don't think we can ever, we, we might never be able to, I mean, it's the same thing with like 9-11. Well, when you hide the video footage, now, how are you when you when you suppress evidence? How are we supposed to be able to say that, you know, all we know is that you're being dishonest, right? So this article is claiming that it was a welder. Uh, welder ignites twenty seven hundred tons of explosive chemicals. That could it's, I mean that's that's a good plausible explanation, right? But that doesn't change the fact that. I mean, even if this, even if this is, a, even if this was completely an act of terrorism, right? Like, even if the government was storing these chemicals, and a, a, an individual terrorist actor, or you know, part of a, a non-governmental group of terrorists, and there aren't very many of those. Uh, by far, the vast majority of terrorists in the world today uh, work for government, either directly or indirectly. Obviously, military, police, politicians, but even the ones that the government calls terrorists are largely funded, uh, if not entirely fueled by government actions. But largely, you know, back channel fueled through governments, uh, you know, looking for excuses to justify military spending, global war on terror, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but even if that's the case, this is a kind of accidental democide. This is death by government. This is, you know, what is the primary cause here? Government created this vulnerability. And, and if you go to this, the, the Sun article, man, the, the, the photos of the devastation. Huge. I mean, yeah, going out like all across the city. It is. It is horrific. So what is the American government doing in response? This, well, let's go to Donald Trump, shall we? Yahoo.com via AFP. Trump says U.S. generals tell him Beirut blast bomb of some kind. Now, Trump has a way of using vague, sort of defensible, wiggle out of kind of words. Donald Trump calls this a bomb attack. Right, separately, not a bomb attack. He didn't put those two words together, but he called it a bomb. He called it an attack. Normal people using English like normal Americans go, oh, bomb attack. A bomb is a device used to cause, create, created to cause harm. And an attack is a deliberate, willful hurting of someone else. And you say, well, well, it was it was an accidental bomb. It wasn't it wasn't that kind of bomb, Adam. You know, it was. I, of course, I said it was a bomb. Yeah, it was a bomb. It blew up. It was a bomb. It was it was a bomb created by the the government of Lebanon, irresponsibly storing two hundred seventy thousand or two hundred whatever it was tons of fertilizer. Really? Okay. Oh, it was an attack. Well, yeah, the, the bomb attacked the city. It was an accidental attack. We know what you're doing, Mr. President, Cheeto Jesus. Really? Like, and this is disgusting. And then he says, and now look, look, you know, hey, remember as Ben Shapiro says, facts don't care about your feelings. Donald Trump says, this was not some kind of manufacturing explosion type of event. It seems to be, according to them, they would know better than I would, but they seem to think it was attack. It would seem like it based on the explosions. I moved with some of our great generals, and they just seemed to feel it was. Really? We're being governed by feelings. Feels. For the feels, we're going to spread this propaganda, this assumption, this, 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 this lie. Donald Trump sat down with his generals. Really? It looks, it looks like a terrible attack. And, you know, I, I, I like using cautious language. It looks to me, it appears, it seems, as opposed to it is definitively. And I'm going to say that about, you know, everything that we know so far about this attack. You know, all of it, of course, caveat. If the whole thing wasn't made up, I don't know, the, the, you know, life isn't a simulation by aliens and we're all in a matrix. Yeah, okay. 
given that caveat, but given what we know, we can say with pretty good certainty what this was. And, you know, then the next story, and this is from, of course, CNN, U.S. defense officials contradict Trump, no indication yet of attack in Beirut. Three U.S. Defense Department officials told CNN that as of Tuesday night, there was no indication that the massive explosion that rocked Beirut on Tuesday was an attack, contradicting an earlier claim from President Donald Trump. Now, we elected a reality TV star, compulsive liar, and con man to be president. And for a while, when, you know, the Trumpa Loompas were going, oh, but isn't it cute? Look at... No, it's not fucking cute anymore. I mean, it never was for those of us who understood what was really at stake. And that, yeah, it wasn't between Trump and Clinton. We could have had Gary Johnson as president. No, so... This, this kind of... When you have this kind of irresponsible talk and policymaking at the highest level of the American government, this gets people killed. Now, we heard earlier, right, the prime minister said, and this is Prime Minister Hassan Diab, I will not rest until we find the person responsible for what happened to hold him accountable and impose the most severe penalties. Well, Mr. Diab, why don't you look in the fucking mirror? Why did this happen? And I, I, the, I knew within minutes after the show when I started poking around, I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. This has been a super overinflated story. So on Twitter, I found this, and this is from uh, at Mikazi, M I Q A Z I. It's an Arab name, and this is a gentleman, uh, blue check mark for what that's worth on Twitter, right? Who it, who translates a lot of Arab news into English, and this is again why I'm I'm excited. I think I think you know that. The world, this is, this is, hey, this happens in the age of the internet. You can't, I mean, I mean, before the internet, we wouldn't have been able to call bullshit on President Trump right away. Uh, or anybody else. And, and when you can't do that, things like this get turned into excuses for war. So this is a quote uh, from Mikazi, uh, and he's taking this from at Lebanon 24. And he said, the, the, the translation is, Major General Ibrahim, Director General of Lebanese Intelligence, has stated that the authorities confiscated a large cache of sodium nitrate months ago that was supposed to be destroyed as exploded due to fire in the inventory at Beirut Airport. <clears throat> Excuse me, Beirut Port. So if we were, and when did this, when did this go out? 10, 12 a.m. yesterday. Before our show yesterday was over at 11 a.m. This was already out there on the internet. This is, by the way, a 754 retweet. It should have a lot more if this is sort of the decisive piece of evidence. And, and there, there are others, I'm sure. But what's getting retweeted, or what was getting retweeted at that point, the mainstream media coverage going, <gasps> explosion, be afraid, be very afraid. We don't know what it is. It's like, no, you do know. You, you could find out before you go run your mouth. You could be just, you know, a little bit of, and this is why yesterday, and I feel like I made the right call. You know, even CJ and Jim were like, hey, Adam, why no, no, don't, don't go to the good news and wrap up the show. There was a big explosion. And it's like, no, no, no. I got to say, I think my instincts were right on this one. I'm glad we're doing it this way. So, I, you know, I tweeted in response to that, retweeting that. So the Lebanese government just admitted that they stole the sodium nitrate and stored it improperly for months. You have got to be kidding me. Just when you thought governments couldn't get any more recklessly dangerous. Now, there are two mistakes in this tweet. Can you see them yet? Two important factual mistakes. It was not sodium nitrate. It was ammonium nitrate. Big difference chemically. Sodium nitrate does not explode like this. Possibly a mistake in the translation. Doesn't train, change the gist of this, right? Right away, we were able to eliminate the possibility that this was a mil hostile military attack. The other thing is, for months, and I saw the months, and I saw years, and I was being conservative, but from what we've seen in the news today, 
I've been able to confirm, at least to my satisfaction, seeing that it was 2013 that the ammonium nitrate was confiscated. It was sitting improperly for over six years. That just makes it worse. But my other prediction there is that the mainstream media is going to be all over this until it becomes undeniable that it's not as fun a story as they thought and it's not as sexy for their narrative because they don't get to blame terrorism. They have to blame government. They don't want to do that. So our last story covering this, AP News has Lebanon to put some Beirut port officials under house arrest. You know, that's as serious as you take this house arrest. You can't put, I mean, there, there's basically, I mean, a, 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 at best, an industrial accident caused by government that killed 100 people. And the people re responsible for this, are, you're, you're not going to take them in? Investigators began searching the wreckage of Beirut's port Wednesday for clues to the cause of the massive explosion that ripped the across the Lebanese capital as the government ordered port officials put under house arrest. International aid flights began to arrive as Lebanon's leaders struggled to deal with the aftermath of Tuesday's blast, crippled by an economic crisis and facing a public where many already blame chronic mismanagement and corruption among the ruling elite for the disaster. So it's, it's worth pointing out that in, in most of the world, People aren't as delusional about government and current events and just the reality of the world that we live in uh, as in the United States. We as citizens of the empire are subject to unique propaganda because if we knew the truth that, you know, there's more. It, it, it's it, it's it, when you want to oppress someone in a third world country, you can just give the dictators a lot of money, secret police, blah, blah, blah. You know, it happens in the United States, you know, for the citizens of the empire, it, it, it's more profitable to propagandize us thoroughly first. And so one of the, the one of the videos I want to I want to share here and, and, and CJ, if you would just pull up, um, you know, let, let, just just the first 30 seconds or so of, of the YouTube video I sent you. And I got to give credit to uh, Crypto Pliskin at Crypto Pliskin on Twitter, who corrected me. He pointed out that this was not sodium nitrate, right? This is ammonium nitrate. So here's the kicker. This is a potential problem in the United States. CJ, please roll tape. This violent explosion ripped through the heart of a small town, killing 15, wounding hundreds, and fueled by a common fertilizer. So could it happen here? Thanks for choosing us tonight. I'm Katie Ramble. And I'm Steve Irvin. That blast was fueled by the chemical ammonium nitrate, which can be found around our state. ABC 15 investigator right, Lauren so Gilger along with the Arizona Center for... This is an ABC for... news story from a news station in my home state of Arizona looking at the ammonia nitrate blast in, excuse me, ammonium nitrate blast that happened in West Texas. That's not West Texas, the town of West... In Te yeah, they're really not good at naming things. And what they looked at in that news story was all the places in Arizona where there are similar stashes of ammonium nitrate. Now, how many of those are by government? Uh, you know, in, in the case of the Beirut explosion, we have a particularly offensive situation where the government stole fertilizer and accidentally turned it into a bomb. Now, we call it bombing, fine. Let's blame the government appropriately for this. And as soon as that becomes, oh, watch, this story is going to fade pretty fast because holding government accountable is not sexy or something that the mainstream media wants to deal with. Right? They, 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 they're, you know, working together to screw over the rest of us with misinformation and misdirection. And what we're going to see around the coverage of this Beirut explosion is going to be no different. There will be attempts to blame this on terrorism. Oh, it was a terrorist who snuck into the facility and ignited everything with whatever. It, it's probably one of those things you'll never know. But they are going to do everything they can to obscure the fact that government was responsible for this. Now, you might be saying, Adam, but chemical fertilizer all over the United States in big stashes that, like in West Texas, could cause the same explosion. Hmm. How am I going to blame government for that one? Well, it's quite simple, really. And it's not lack of regulation. It's protection from liability. When 
in corporate America, you can have an accident like this and not go to jail, not face real consequences. Well, uh, then we don't need to buy insurance for this because in a free market, you wouldn't be able to do business with thousands of tons of potential explosives without insurance. And right now, that insurance market is entirely regulated, managed, uh, legislated, uh, and adjudicated by the government, not the market, not a peaceful system, a violent system that protects dangerous people from accountability. I mean, the real answer here is to end all of that corruption, not go hunt down every pile of ammonium nitrate. But if the government's got their hands on some that they've confiscated, that is what we should be looking out for now all over the world. So I hope that there are people, independent journalists, people like you who care about truth, logic, reason, and holding real criminals accountable, and we pay attention to this and we actually get to the bottom of the rabbit hole on this one. While the mainstream media goes back to scaring us about coronaphobia, police brutality, racism, and a whole host of other devices. I thought I could get through this segment without mentioning coronavirus. How many of those hundreds of deaths in, 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 in Beirut are going to be are going to be listed as COVID deaths. All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. You get the point. There's a bigger picture here. Once again, we are being misdirected. The explosion itself, not the biggest story of the year. The continuing irresponsibility of government, yeah, that's worth paying attention to. All right, before we get to our panel, let's check in with the comment section. I know we're a little bit behind schedule here. Jim, I think that was worth it. Good segment. Did you like that? Segment, Decisive yeah. coverage. Yeah, I felt like it was it's good to be able to focus kind of on on one topic for the day, and uh, like oh shoot, I wanted to end with a hell on hell on earth line tying this back, and that's why we are still all over the globe living with hell on earth under governments that uh, I should have written this out today. Governments that are able to uh, uh, commit such accidental atrocities, uh, commit accidental democide, and not be held accountable. Yeah, that's it, it, it is. Like the, the hell on earth is not, I mean, yeah, and, and it's, it's nice to be able to joke and, and be sarcastic and put in perspective and give commentary on this. But, but you know, it's, yeah, it's a serious tragedy. You know, and I, I don't mean to demean, uh, you know, the, the, the hundred people who died, a hundred, it could be more, it could be, I mean, it looks like if they have a death toll that's a hundred and change right now, you could get up to, you know, two or three hundred, something like that when they clear the rubble and, and people die from injuries over the next few days. This is an ongoing crisis that, you know, the, the world's uh, attention should go to, to, you know, helping address. Uh, but let's not lose perspective when we're right. I think that that's that's really important. Uh, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I don't want I don't want those hundred people to have died in vain. Or of Corona. The or of Corona. Yeah. <laughs> if you accept government narrative narratives without uh, questioning, then the people who died at the hands of government uh, kind of died in vain when you could have used their deaths to uh, prevent future deaths. And, and to discover the real truth. So, Jim, any comments? Uh, well, there was one related to the related to this. Um, it's OBL music. They measure blast like that in RC Roman candles. Uh, that blast yesterday was at least one thousand RC. Now that just sounds way too small to be accurate to me. What do you think? Is that is that an actual measurement you know of Roman candles? I don't, I don't really care, and I don't, like I said, I don't, the speculative analysis, like, no, it, it would take, I mean, maybe someone, if you were an explosive expert, and you could look at this blast, you look at the video, you could, you know, time it out, how many frames, how many, you know, fractions of a second for this to get this many yards or meters, and go, okay, well, was, yeah, you could, but even that analysis is going to take more than 24 hours. I mean, I guess you could do a quick version. Uh, but no, I'm not. Yeah, Roman. I, we're not going to get into that now. It, if if there if, if someone in the audience wants to share an analysis of this, maybe uh, tomorrow uh, when when we have you know time to, to just hit a ton of headlines, you know, I, I may, you know, th there are going to be some follow up stories on this. And I think I think yeah, we're definitely going to cover this again uh, when we have uh, news from the Lebanese government about what happened when we have uh, sort of. You know, final decisive investigation. We'll comment on that. And if if someone in our audience or in our producers club wants to send us a story, uh, you know, analyzing the the blast itself or the explosion or or looking at it. But uh, you know, in, in a way, like I don't. It's not, it's not the priority for me. It's worth it's worth covering. Uh, but no, like really, where where are the other ammonium nitrate stores around the world? 
and how many of them are in government hands and how many of them are being, I mean, the main thing is if you, if you care about people, it doesn't matter how the ammonium nitrate came to be a hazard, where is it stored improperly? You know, and then we know why, why, do, why like it, it's not possible in the modern economy to put together a company that's creating thousands of tons of, of fertilizer that's potentially explosive without massive public buy-in or institutional support of the, you know, and I mean, government and insurance companies and, and all the other industries related to that particular business. Uh, and it takes a certain amount of consumer blindness, right? And, and, and this is the problem. This is what I want to change about America is that we have trusted government to, to manage safety of these plants and the insurance industry. You go, no, can't.